Ellie Emo was a 20-year-old woman who lived with her mother and three brothers in Kemi, Lapland, Finland. She studied at the Kemi School of Economics and worked part-time as a business assistant in the wallpaper and paint trade. On December 7th, 1955, Ellie went out with her friends, Myla and Annalisa, to the city center. The three went to the Makatluva Cafe and did some window shopping afterwards. They then went to the Valio Bar. At around 9 p.m., Myla told her friends that her feet were freezing and it was time to head back home. Ellie and Myla lived close to one another. They said goodbye to Annalisa and headed home together. Along the way, two teenage boys, about 12 to 14 years old, offered to escort them, but the girls turned the boys down. The two walked along Lapentai Road and reached Ellie's home. Myla, however, asked Ellie if she could walk a little farther with her towards her home. Ellie agreed and walked 250 meters with her to Lapentai Road and Risky Con Con Kato intersection. Both parted ways and Ellie headed back to her house she would never make it back home. Ellie's mother returned home from work shortly before midnight. The front door of the house, which led to the downstairs and the upstairs apartment, was unlocked. However, this was not unusual as the neighborhood was considered to be safe. The upstairs apartment was occupied by a tenant. Ellie's brothers were sleeping downstairs when her mother arrived home. Ellie's bags, containing her school books, were on the living room floor and some of her books were on the table. Her mother figured Ellie had studied before heading out. She wasn't worried that Ellie wasn't home this late at night as she sometimes spent the night at Annalisa's home. The following day at 12.50 p.m., however, a schoolboy found Ellie's body next to Lapentai Road. She was found just 30 meters from her house. She was found face down and her body was partially covered with snow. An autopsy revealed that she had been struck in the face and stabbed several times in the neck and behind her ear. She had not been sexually assaulted and there was no sign that robbery was a motive. Ella had been wearing her gloves, which were now stained with blood, as Ella had ostensibly tried to grab the knife during the attack. Police found a sheath of a Mora knife at the crime scene. The murder weapon itself was never located. The police did receive a knife found on a bus, however, but it was never determined if it was the same knife used in Ellie's murder. Next to Ellie's body, police discovered footprints of a person wearing large ski boots. Police also found tire tracks from a bicycle next to a nearby bush. Police interviewed more than 60 people in the following days, but none were charged. The tenant, living upstairs in Ellie's house, told police that that night she had heard a loud scream followed by a softer cry at around 9.45 p.m. and then everything went quiet. The tenant said she did not think much of it at the time. Police later found out that earlier that day, Ellie had had a fight with another student. Ellie had outed the student for charging extra money from the students for the class photographs of which he was in charge. Ellie brought the matter to the student union and the student was asked to pay back the extra money to the students. The student reportedly had written a letter to Ellie, which police later described as, quote, malicious. The student was questioned by police, but he had an alibi. Over the years, police interviewed hundreds of people, but none were ever considered a suspect. Police only ever named one suspect, Runar Holstom. Holstom had been charged for the two Le Latte campsite murders in 1959. Holmstrom was interviewed, but he denied killing L.A. He told police that during the winter of 1955 and 1956, he was at his home in Munsala. He said he only left to visit a dentist. However, he was unable to remember the name of that dentist. He said he made the trips on his bicycle. Police also asked him about the Mora knife that he owned. He could only remember that he'd received the knife in September of 1959, but did not remember how he got it or from where. The sheath that he was using for the knife was also not the original Mora knife sheath. 
And when asked, he said again that he did not remember what happened to the original. Police asked him if anyone other than his family members could verify his whereabouts for the winter of 1955. Holstrom said he had guests visiting his home, but when the police asked who these guests were, he could not remember their names. Holstrom repeatedly denied any involvement in LA's murder. He was never charged with her murder and there have been no leads or any suspects in the case. It remains unsolved. <laughs>